All right, so we're live, everybody. We got uh, Chad, and we got Mark, and we got Steve Douglas here. Uh, should be a pretty interesting show. We're going to talk about keeping your catch versus CPR. Uh, be interested to see what these other three guys has got to say about it, and uh, like to hear from y'all in chat too. What y'all got to say about it? I know most people are like me; they like to keep some every once in a while. I don't keep near as many as a lot of people. Maybe one, two meals a year, but. I always release all the big fish, no matter what. Uh, Chad, what do you like to do? Do you like to eat your catch? you like to throw them all back? What? For me, it's about, it, like you just said, it's about once or twice a year I will go out to fill the fridge, or, you know, the freezer full or something. You know, I'll, I'll go for eater size fish. Uh, to me, eater fish are that two to five, maybe six pound range. Um, Besides that, anything bigger, I, I would throw back. Most of my fishing is CPR. Um, one thing I, you know, you, when you asked me about this, I was thinking about it a little bit more. And you know, there's specific times of the year that I'll do that as well. You know, if I if I know it's a spawning type time, I'm not going to be keeping any fish. Every fish I catch during that time is going to be going back. Um, you know, if there's a chance that you know that that might increase some of the numbers, um, it, it's going to make a little bit of a difference i'm going to do it but more springtime and then now here coming up in the fall i'll probably pull some in for you know the winter time and i'll put them in a freezer for a while yeah yeah, yeah. definitely uh mine i i don't really like to keep the blues period but i'm fishing in a lake you know what i mean i'm i'm in a lake where it gets stocked with so many and then other than that we're well we're we're completely dependent on if they reproduce or not which half the biologists say they will and half of them say they won't you know the, they go through the motions of spawn but nobody can really say whether they actually do produce young or not so i feel like if i just keep a few channel cats put the blues back then i got a chance at trophy fish and i don't keep big channel cats you know about 25 inches is about about what i'll keep but other than that put them back they say they don't spawn until they're over what 32 inches anyway but i'm like you even that time of year put them all back let them all let them all have a chance you know steve what do you got to say what do you think about it about eating fish yeah i mean do you do you keep a lot of fish do you just keep I a few? no i don't keep any fish and it, it ain't it ain't because of, of none of that I, I i feel like you know it is a resource you should Take advantage of that resource and use it if you want it. Don't abuse it, but you can use it. But yeah, if I want fish, I go to Captain T's or uh, <laughs> a fish house or, or, or something like that. I mean, it, it. Now, if I come visit Chad and Chad had the fish and he cleaned them fish and fried them fish, I could eat them. But I can't clean them, fry them. It's just something about it. I can't. I've never been able to eat my fish. I don't know if it's because the fish smells on my hand or what, but uh, I just like that. But, you know, good channel cat can be good. Little fiddlers. Mm -hmm. The ones you just chop the head off, skin them, and eat bone and all. That's that's the way to do it right there. It It's always better, Steve, when somebody else does the cleaning and the cooking. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's that's my main gig. I'm, I'm not against keeping some fish. Um, you know, and, and I'd probably be different than somebody else. I, I may keep a 20-pound flathead. Now, I don't know if you guys have ever cleaned or ate a flathead, but... Dude, a flathead is good eating. It, it is. Sure. You know, the belly meat, and, you know, you can't get that belly meat on a five or a ten pound flathead like, you know, guys are wanting to catch. The resources there, I, I see a lot of guys cleaning 40 pounders, and the guys may hate me after this, but, you know, if you're doing one a year for a family reunion or something like that, I, I really can't complain about that because the resource is there to use. But if you're going out there catching 40 pounder after 40 pounder and 50 pounder and selling the pay lakes and that that uh, resource is not there for us. That that's abuse. So yeah, you're yeah, mm -hmm. hundred percent. Mark, what do you think? I'm, you just I, I just uh, <laughs> well, here's the deal. I've had flathead before. I've kept one in my time, and Steve is absolutely right. It's delicious. 
But what I do to keep from keep the urge from keeping them, which I don't, like I said, I've only kept one in my time, um, is uh, basically why I fish for crappie. I enjoy crappie. I'll, I'll keep crappie every chance I get, except if I don't want to bring it home and clean it, because I, I totally get that. It's a pain in the butt. I just cleaned, you know, a half dozen today <clears throat> and cooked them up, and it took, I barely, you know, made it here to, to get this done it took you know a, a little while to get done but it does take some time both just like anything mark? as far as what i said did you get both sides mark i did get both sides this time chad thank you okay so check it. <laughs> one of them actually had a hook in its back at one time didn't taste any different than the ones that didn't you could definitely tell somebody used it for flathead bait but um also you know <sighs> With the with pollution and stuff these days, larger catfish aren't great. You eat too many of them. Not only are you harming the resource, you're probably going to do yourself some harm in the long run. So that doesn't mean much coming from a guy who likes, you know, whiskey, tobacco, and, and barbecue, to be honest <laughs> with you. All those are bad for you. But I kind of like, you know, the fact that keeping mercury and stuff out of my system. Um, do I believe in eating what you catch? I definitely believe in responsible harvest. Um, let the big ones go back to grow. I mean, a big old 30-pound flathead is going to make, you know, tenfold, twentyfold the eggs, which, which ups the possibility. I, I don't know. I've heard a little of both um, that, you know, two flathead, maybe one flathead out of one season will come out of there. You know, and I, I talk flatheads because that's what we have here. We have zero blues. I mean, I have two blues under my belt, one being a four-pound and an eight-pound. Holler out to the Cross family for taking care of me and putting me on my first blue this year. That was a cool experience. But I couldn't tell you what a blue tastes like. Fly is delicious. I'll keep channel catch because we've got a, abundant channel cats, especially the eater size. Everything from what Steve says, you know, the little hole fryers they call them, fiddlers they're also called around the country i call them i call them just pan sized cat uh, channel cats and i'll keep them now this is going to be silly i'll take a look at the fish and think what can i make with the fillets off of this fish and if i can make a, a like a hoagie or a sub sandwich out of a channel cat fillet that's probably the top size i'm going to take as far as the rest of them if i take a bigger one it'll be for my mom maybe eight pounds seven pounds at the most but even with the channel cats at that size it's few and far between that i do um and if i do take them that big i'm chunking them up i'm not i'm not cooking those whole that's just a little too much for me too much catfish for me as far as yeah. taste goes is what i mean by that how about you ryan do you keep fish I, I, I keep two messes a year, probably, and one of those is normally because somebody said they wanted some fish, and I brought them home and then called them, and they said, well, I can't get up there to get them uh, this. If you'll clean them, you know, I'll, I'll come get them, put them in the freezer, you know, just I'll come get them later. And I'm like, if I'm cleaning them, I, I'm going through all the work. I'm going to eat them. You know what I mean? It's uh, that's, that's where I'm at with them. You know, I'll go out and catch crappie and, and do that and give them away. And you usually don't have any problem getting somebody to come get them. But, but as far as that, I grew up, and, and this is where part of the stigma of, of fishing needs to be changed a lot. Your old timers, you know, the the guys that were out there fishing in aluminum john boats, you know, 20, 30 years ago, maybe more. They brought home what they caught. If they caught a 50 pound flathead, that flathead come home with them. If, if they were bass fishing and they were out there and they caught five five pounders that day, they brought five five pounders home and filleted them, you know? And and that that stigma is what's kind of extended to cat fishing more than it has bass fishing. You know, most of you, you don't, you rarely see people keep bass now. And I don't know if that came from the tournaments side of it or if that, if that just came from most people doing it or in it for the sport or it, the sports just evolved to people don't keep bass anymore. Now, like my papa and them, they still bass fish, you know, and, it, and, and if they go out and get five, five pounders, that's what they're bringing home that day. You know, they, they stick to the law, but if the law allow it, they'll bring it home. But they're Cat bringing fish. it home to eat it, right? I mean, they're fishing to eat it. No, it's, it's not that they, go out and buy hamburgers that day you know it's just that they want fish to eat but catfishing most of the people you see catfishing at the lake now, now as far as youtube most people on here are are like us you know they're going to eat a mess every once in a while or something yeah. but people you see at the lake you see 10 guys lined up down the bank beside the boat ramp 
And all 10 of those guys most of the time are there to catch them fish to eat. Or if you see a guy at the boat ramp and he says, well, what are you fishing for? Catfish? Well, you know, they see me on a kayak. Well, where are you keeping them at? I'm, I'm not. I'm putting them back, man. You know, it's, it's just a stigma that's stuck for the last 30 or 40 years that, that we need to get the word out there and change. You know, everybody can't go out and keep a limit of catfish today. If they do that, we're not going to have him. But everybody can go out, you know, a couple times a year and get on a mess of fish and we'll be fine. Like Steve said, it's a resource that, and I don't know, I just feel like we need to get the word out and, and let people know, you know, because where I'm at up here, it is jug fishing central. Mm-hmm. You go out on Friday or Saturday night and there'll be 800 jugs lined up down the lake on each side and across the middle. And and those guys are keeping everything they get a hold of. Yeah, I mean, part of Kentucky, who, who's running Taylorsville Lake. That's what it is. I, I've complained about that for years and years. You go out there and see 900 jugs. You can't, you can't fish because you're in amongst a bunch of jugs. Uh, I don't think it's uh, the people are taking advantage of it, no doubt. But the authorities need to uh, how about ten noodles of each? Let, yeah, let's do that yeah, like that instead of fifty yeah. noodles per person. I, I think I think places like that though they they need a you know based off of the, the acreage of the lake. I mean that's just too many. I mean Taylorsville is a decent sized lake, but. Is there really a need for that many private by one one angle or couple, you know, whatever, to have that many on that lake, right? You, you fellas may not know this, but I've been fishing Taylorville since they filled it. Now that was a lot of bass of it, uh, but you know, I, I've seen it grow and progress. But back in I'd say the early '90s, it was nothing to go to Taylorville. Like this was before the blues were in it. It was nothing to go to Taylorville Lake and catch a mess of. 20 pound plus channel cats. It, wow. was, it was stupid. It was ridiculous. This is before I even knew what a rod holder was or anything, but I, I, I can remember setting my rods on the, on the side of the boat and, and just nailing these big fish. And then they put the blues in uh, and then people got wind of these noodles. But here, here's what I, I think, you know, I grew up bank polo. When I was a teenager, you couldn't, I, I, if I wasn't in school, I was on the river and we set bank poles. Noodles, limb lines, I, I don't have any problem with any of that as long as it's done properly and you take your stuff back. And I've seen too many birds, hawks or, or, or uh, those stalking birds, the long birds, mm-hmm. eating what they've left, what people have left. And of course, they still got the hook on it. Now you got a bird hanging here. And if they do it responsible, I don't have a problem with it because there's different methods people can use. And it's all legal, but if you gotta, you gotta use some sense. I think you gotta use some. Uh, I mean, there's gotta be room for everybody, but everybody's gotta use the resource properly. I think. I agree. Twenty years ago, twenty years ago, when they set the laws, say like at Taylorsville, like to where they said twenty-five a piece or fifty per boat max, there wasn't the amount of anglers out there trying to do it then that there is now. You know what I mean? Especially since the COVID stuff all come about and all that, and fishing has just exploded, especially catfishing. I've seen more catfishing since COVID than I have in my life, I guess. What used to be okay for everybody to go out and put 50 noodles per boat, when you had 10 boats on the lake doing it, that wasn't that many. Now that you've got 30 or 40 boats on the lake in a night doing it on a Friday or Saturday night, you know, that's way too many. And and like Steve said, the enforcement is a big issue there as well. But that's a whole nother story. Uh, I, I really think that slot limits are a way to go. And that's what we have. We have, I think it's two over 25 per boat, no matter how many people's on it. And uh, I can't remember. What is it? 10 under, Steve? I have no idea. I don't keep fish. I don't even worry about it. Yeah. I mean, it's. We're losing. Uh-oh. You still there, Ryan? I can't hear oh. you, Ryan. We lost your uh, audio. Did you have a phone call? You're going to have to go out and go back in, probably. Well, Ryan's uh, 
while Ryan's figuring that out, uh, what I wanted to bring to everybody's attention in chat is definitely if you're looking at 20, 30, 50 years ago, you got to remember life was a little harder back then. Uh, those rules and regulations that have been put in place were put there to, um, to, to, to please the people that were fishing because they were fishing for a source of food. This day and age, food is available to everybody fairly cheap, fairly reasonable. There, there's, there's no reason to keep that mindset. That mindset was handed down from generation to generation. Keep that in mind. Also remember how many more people there are this, this day and age that are not only fishing, but, but surviving in, in general. I mean, there, there's, there's, there's a big reason to, to, to think about responsible harvest whenever you're taking food, food, whether it's for the freezer or for, for dinner that night. Usually if I, uh, I'm keeping fish, it's for a meal within, you know, either the next day or within a week's time, my, 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 my freezer seldom gets any fillets, uh, crappie, maybe somewhere or other, but if I'm keeping some channel cats, it's usually I'll, I'll, I'll catch them and eat them and I'll be fine for a month or two, two months even so. We usually that's the way I kind of do well, it. Catfish I, has been considered a trash fish everywhere, all over the United States for so many years. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and, and even up and but there's different regions has different laws and regulations. But up up until like 2013, in the state of Kentucky, a man could go out and catch a hundred hundred pound catfish, no limit, no nothing, and that's what was happening. Uh, it was in 2010, I did the first video saying, hey, look, I've seen my fishing decline and, and we need to fix it. So it, it went to like 2013, 2014 from 2010 when I first did that before we got anything changed. And it was just a little minute, little something. We were able to get uh, regulations on some of the upper Ohio River. But some of the lower Ohio River were getting screwed because they can still catch four over forty. I mean, you got to please the commercial fishermen. You got to please everybody, and and it, it just don't work. And people get mad at everybody. I mean, that I, never I, helps when people start know, getting mad at each other and not quit listening to each other. It doesn't help either. I, I, I because I was the YouTuber back then. Uh, Ten years ago, I was the only catfish YouTuber, but I had a little YouTube fame. Well, a lot of these guys just thought I could go tell Kentucky what to do. I, I, can, <laughs> I can suggest to Kentucky what to do, but my little bit of YouTube fame couldn't go in there and stomp the heels and say, hey, I want this change. It ain't going to happen. But they, they got accused of me of selling commercial gear to the commercial fishing. And they were just, and, and still to this day, there's four or five of them over in Cincinnati that's still taking pot shots. All the <laughs> It's so ridiculous. I mean, I'm doing nothing but trying to help. And uh, I don't know. It could be a jealousy thing or whatever. But anyway, I see three new YouTubers right here. Be careful because somebody's going to come to you one day. And because you're a YouTuber and you have an audience, they're going to expect some stuff. And you don't do it for them, they're going to be mad. So <laughs> there you go. I'm me good at making people mad, right, Mark? Yeah, me too. I, was like, I make Mark mad every day. People look at me, they just get mad, Steve. Yeah, but yeah, I, I'm all about saving the catfish, all that, but I'm also about the resources there to use. I, I don't believe we can save every catfish out there. And like no. one, thing, one thing in my video that I did say that a lot of people got mad at me about because they should, they said I should have just condemned commercial fishing, but you got to remember I was just a dude, a, a dude catfishing and didn't know anything about legal laws or anything. And I said, you know, look, guys, there may need to be a, a, a need for commercial fishing, but do they need to take all what they're taking? And because right. I said there may be a need for it, because I didn't know in my head, I didn't know. Yeah. So you got to have some, you know, just like they have deer season every year, you got to keep the deer in check or, you know, you're not going to have the big antlers and, and things like that. I didn't know, but man, when I said that, they run me through the ringer because, <laughs> because I wouldn't condemn commercial fishing. So it's been a process over since 2010. And, and you know, honestly, I kind of got burnt out on it. Um, I'm still for it and I will help anybody who wants to do it. But I've had my time. I've had my time from 2010 to 2000, what is to, to the day. Uh, and so, you know, it, it's, it's a fighting challenge with, with new people coming in. They don't think I'm doing anything again. So, um, it's weird. I did see something the other day where 
somebody was schooling me on Catfish Dave, like I was the new YouTuber. <laughs> so, so, you know, you got the new generation coming in and, and I've seen, I've been through that too. The new generation will come in and, and know who I am and, and, and they'll get talking to the wrong people. And next thing you know, they're hollering and sending me private messages to tell me what a dork I am for not helping with this fishery thing. Oh, it, it, it's, it's you bad. Know, I'm sorry for going off on a rant, guys. No, you're good. <laughs> Cause, uh, to me, it makes it, it center making me think, and this is a, you know, a good thing. And, I love what Ryan is putting together here of, of this kind of, you know, this talk and stuff, but it starts with each and every one of us. We need to go out there and try to do the right thing. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you made a very valid point earlier about um, following the rules and regulations. We need to follow our rules and regulations that are put in place. But at the same time, we need to keep, doing stuff like this to help maybe educate one or two people, or maybe this will go viral for, for Ryan and more people will jump on board. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, the commercial guys need to follow their regulations that are set forth for them. Yep. And hopefully, you know, with the legislation, like you, you know, you said you've tried to help with, I know there's other people across the country trying to do different stuff, but you know, the more, we speak up and try to educate and we try to do those things in the long run. Hopefully it'll pay off. Right. But we have to start with us. That's right. That's right. You catch more flies with honey. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Pretty I never much. understand how, how, why people got on me like that, but I, I think people are just frustrated and didn't know where to turn. I mean, I, I'm just I like think, you. I think it's a combination of a lot of things. You got the hardcore CPR guys that are nothing but CPR. That's all they do. And when it comes to somebody not CPRing all their catches, all their fish, they get kind of upset and hurt. And all that does is anger the other guy and make him want to keep twice as many fish. And yeah. just take a breath before you confront somebody who doesn't see things the way you do as far as, um, you know, keeping and, and releasing fish. And I'm sure you guys will end up uh, uh, sharing some secrets on how to catch catfish too. Cause I'm guys who are, who, who are doing it for food. They, they're, they're doing it for a reason. It might be somebody yeah. you learn from. Well, different yep. regions of the United States too. The people got to understand that. Guys sitting over in Cincinnati looking at, at these big blues that they're catching in, in uh, the James River out there. You know, the guys in Cincinnati are wanting these big fish in the Ohio River, so they go catch them. But the guys in, in Maryland, they're trying to ex exterminate them. I think flatheads are blue one uh, because they're I think both. Blue, blue crabs or something. So, um, and by the way, guys, me, I, off topic, I've tried to eat a blue crab at, at a Chinese joint and there's nothing on that thing to eat. Not much. <laughs> so it, it's better when somebody else <laughs> it's better when somebody else picks the meat and puts it into something, Steve. Trust me on that one. <laughs> okay, the guys on the bottom here like for other people to do this for them, okay? Yeah. <laughs> they want to catch the fish, but they don't want to clean and cook. Right. Well, yeah. There's a perfect example of how money talks. Blue crab brings in a heck of a lot more than catfish does. As far exactly. as, you know, taxes, as far as, you know, uh, uh, restaurants, stuff like that, anything, even even people who go out there and do uh, uh, blue crab fishing just for uh, sport, it, it it brings in a heck of a lot more money mm -hmm. for, for those areas. So that that's always going to win. So tread lightly when you're coming across people like that and try to, again, try to figure out a midpoint between everybody. So, Well, I wish more people would, would clean more fish, to be honest with you. I mean, that, that's one of the reasons I had the, the catfish conference uh, catfish cook off, you know. So everybody, yeah, everybody's preaching, you know, CPR, CPR, which I I, I like that. We need it, and, and to a, a degree. But catfishing, I mean, it's not like bass. You you need to eat some catfish every now and again. But like I say, I, I buy it at the catfish conference and let them cook it. <laughs> but but yeah, I, 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 I mean it's. It's probably something I probably need to really start doing a little bit more just, just to kind of help people understand that there's nothing wrong with it. It's not. It, uh, it, yeah, it, that, that being said, you need to also, you know, like Watts Bar Dam or Watts Bar Lake up there. I, I think they got some hazards on don't eat the fish up here. So, you know, I pay attention to that. 
Um, yeah, every and, every bottle of wa- every body of water usually will list um, at least at in Illinois. I know it's that way, and I believe it's that way in Missouri and, and Wisconsin too. Um, you go to the DNR's page and see what what they recommend you don't over consume. I mean, you'd be surprised how small it is in certain bodies of water, if at all. And Ryan, I Ryan, mean, like you're you're like Taylorsville. I don't know that I'd eat too many fish out of Taylorsville just because of all the farmland and the, the nitrates and stuff they put on the fields. It all comes right down in the middle of Taylorsville. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, I, I don't know what what they have on Taylorsville. I haven't been over for quite some time as far as fishing, but is there any reg- regulations on eating them over there? There's no warning signs at the boat ramps like the ones you're talking about down in Tennessee. Mm-hmm. And I, I've never seen any kind of PS or anything like that in any of the fishing guys but i'm like you i mean i go out there after a big rain and you've seen just because all these farmers fields is washed down the valley down into the salt river Mm -hmm. and it's all a big bunch hole well they fertilized that field for the last 20 years you know growing beans and corn up there right you know all all that nitrogen stuff's washing right down the water and 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 van buren up there they say it's filled in like 15 foot worth of mud in the last 20 years you know Oh, yeah, I remember I used to be able to run my bass boat in there 60, 70 mile an hour. I wouldn't do that nowadays. No, it's a, it's a, like, I mean, you have to watch even going through there with the kayak. If you don't follow the channel, you'll run right up the mud. Right. And, but I mean, even the, even the little lake I grew up on, up on Norris Lake in Tennessee, it's, it's the clinch in the Powell River. It's just, love talking about a watch bar. It's, it's way upstream from there. They've had signs up there about the mercury in the water since I was a kid. You know, you're only supposed to eat so much per day or per week mm-hmm. or per month or something. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, we ate it two or three times a week, you know, but nothing ever happened to us. I mean, we're not the prettiest people there ever was, I don't guess, but it didn't kill us. Speak for yourself. <laughs> well, there's different types of folks out there too, because I'm noticing. And I don't know if you guys, since you're YouTubers, you look around. I've I've started looking around at new YouTubers, and I found this gentleman towards the Mississippi Ohio River area that is eating everything he catches. Uh, I think his name is Cornelius Family Catfishing. Yeah, Cornelius. I've seen that one. Oh, dude. I mean, he goes down there. He does some good fishing. And he's he's showing people how to fish, but he'll if he catches a couple thirties or forties, they're going on a stick. He calls them groceries. He does. <laughs> Go to get his drink, get his groceries. So you got that guy's mindset, and and with, with that guy, you also have his followers that you know they're they're following what he's doing, or somebody like you guys, you got followers, are following what you're doing. So there's several. A couple yeah. of different classes of, of cat fishermen out there. Um, one one time at a tournament, this has been years ago, one time at a tournament, I didn't fish it, but I went down to watch the weigh-in. The guys won it. This was on the Ohio River. The guys won it, and then they turned around and, and said, well, we're off to Catfish Paradise. There's a tournament up there. So there's guys that don't even care that where these fish are coming from. They're going to fish a tournament at, at a pay lake. So, you know, I, I guess you could kind of categorize three different people, catfishers. Yeah. One's CPR, ones that don't care one way or the other, and the ones that just will eat everything they got. So I don't guess there's nothing wrong with any of them, but I, I don't know how all of them are going to kind of combine. Because I did, I did comment one time on this Cornelius guy's, uh, one of his videos, and, man, I got attacked. I had a race. Really? Party. Yeah, I got attacked. Yeah. He, he he wanted to know, wonder why he got turned in for something, uh, it, 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 for cleaning the fish or something like that. And I come out and told him, I said, look, most people in the community kind of frown on on keeping these big fish like this. I said, I it not bother me none, but I mean, that could be your problem. You know, some other guys don't like what you're doing. And then I had this, all kinds of folks coming in there and, and uh, Saying it's Steve Douglas, the catfish dude, probably the one turns you in. And <laughs> I just said, nah, I ain't even going to. And I was going to try to help that guy. I really liked it. But yeah. I, I don't know. I mean, 
And he's Catfishing Cornelius. I know him well. Yeah. Very oh, yeah. entertaining, I, and he does get some big fish. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I would probably keep more fish, but by the time you put a 20-hour trip into the lake, you ain't coming home and cleaning nothing but yourself before you hit the bed. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's, yeah. I never clean them when I get home. What I do is I put them on ice and I'll clean them the next day. They're easier to clean that way. So you find it easier to clean them after they've been put on ice? Well, I just leave them on ice. You can keep them up to a day. Or maybe. I would, I've would. i never done longer than a day, but I imagine you could probably keep them on ice for two as long as the ice doesn't melt. It'll stiffen them up a little bit. They're a little easier to handle. So, Yeah. I, I always thought it made them more slimy and harder to hold on to when you well, start to get to night. If you're too worried, I use paper towels when I'm doing that, um, and and I'll just hold on to the fish using a paper towel. That usually makes it a little easier, and a sharper Which knife. Looks good. What was that, I'm Ryan? Kinda, you said something. I'm kind of old school with it. I'm out here in the yard on the tailgate of the truck with a piece of plywood on it. You know what I mean? And that's how. That's how I did the crappie I just cooked for dinner tonight. I was out on my tailgate. My wife won't let me bring that in home. They're like, keep all that blood and guts outside. Yeah. And I actually use an electric fillet knife. That's the best invention for somebody that's going to eat fish that they have ever made. And I've yet to come. <laughs> Get yourself a real fillet knife. You don't need you don't need no board on the tailgate. Just lay it on the dirt. Come on, Ryan. On you're getting all you're all getting all city fight on me. Yeah. Just don't get your stuff from Luke Nichols. <laughs> <laughs> yeah he did he what? did he just super that's what my knives are like steve so i'll make sure never to hand you one of them that'll cut you in a heartbeat so hey this it didn't even do, it didn't do no slicing when it hit my knee it straight just straight in straight i mean and it was over with six stitches there you go <laughs> <laughs> how did those asian carp taste did you ever i mean i know you I, 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 I could eat them, but I think you got to cut them in smaller chunks. But it's a really white meat. It's like crappie. It, it's, and it can't be that bad because all it eats is, is uh, like little bugs and, and, and uh, algae and stuff. So it can't, you know, it's not down picking crap up off the bottom or anything. It, it's, a clean, it's, it's a clean filter fish is what it is. Hmm. Can't be no worse than a spoonbill because spoonbill eats the same way. Yeah, people either love or they hate spoonbills. I haven't had, I have had a chance to hate them. Yeah. Back back when I was a kid, that, that was the big thing to do down in Tennessee, you know, is go snagging for them spoonbills, man. And and that's the only reason we was going to get them to eat, you know. I, I was too little to remember what they tasted like or anything, but but I'm like Steve. They probably about the same. They're about the same fish. They feed the same way. They live the same life. You know. Hey, there ain't nothing like being in a big major tournament and have a massive takedown and get a forty pound fish on the other end. And when it comes up, it's a spoonbill. <laughs> that's 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 a bad feeling when when you're in a tournament like that. You, you think you got big fish, all of a sudden, boom. But, but as far as, as keeping fish, I feel like keeping the small ones like Steve was talking about allows the bigger ones to grow. You know, if, if you get – my uncle had a pond, and he stocked it with crappie. And three years later, you know, that pond was just overrun with 10-inch crappie, and they would not get no bigger. And he told me, he said, come down here and pull these crappie out and pull all you can pull out in a day. Just get them out of there. He said, they're, they're eating all my bait. My bass can't eat, you know. Take them out. We pulled out, I'd say we pulled out 500 crappie that evening out of that thing and cleaned them, put them all in the freezer and everything. And then the next year we went down there fishing again and he had 13 and 14 inch crappie in that pond. Yep. You don't do that. Like crappie are just fast multipliers, I know. But if, if you don't go do that every year and take some of them out, they're never going to get bigger. Yeah, we do, we do. I keep mentioning this. We did a show. Um, 
uh, with Bob Lusk on Panfish Nation, me and Lau, we, we let him talk for a while, and, and he talked a lot about that. Um, sometimes you got to take even the big ones out to let the little ones reproduce or leave some of the big ones, figure out what you want. Selective harvest, again, is something that has, plays a big part to do um, with, with ponds and such. Also, you know, they recommend anybody who uh, is stocking their ponds that you get the hybrid crappies because they will overrun a pond pretty quick and just keep restocking them as time goes by. Just so in case anybody out there has a pond, you can overrun it really quick with crappie. But even even if you go to a, a smaller lake, you know, like uh, say Beaver Lake up here, up in Kentucky here, up there. Say you go up there and you're catching, like most most places you go to, you'll either catch a few big bass or you'll catch a thousand little bitty ones. You know, it's it's never a mixture of both at these places and that's uh, and I, that to me that's what causes that you know you're either overstocked with small ones or you've got just enough big ones to make trophy fish i have access to a, a a private lake out here near the house actually it's like 20 minutes from my house um and uh during ice fishing we go out there we keep every bass we catch and I fish with pro bass. A lot of people that are on the pro circuit on that fish on that lake, because the 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 it's so stunted. If you get like a anything under sixteen inches, we keep in a sixteen inch, uh, uh, almost sixteen inch bass. It, it makes for some pretty good sized fillets, but they're begging that people take them out of there. They get so over overrun and undergrown in there. Release in the grease. What, what's that? <laughs> That's somebody likes to eat some fish, I guess. Who, who who did that? Oh, you're talking about the the There's a little, little thing down there that says release the grease. Oh, <laughs> oh CPR. The grease. The grease. I've seen it. I I've, I've seen it going across, and that's the first time I've read it. Oh, I just now noticed it. <laughs> that's that's what a lot of your old timers say. So, yeah, I release them. I release them in the grease. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Well, Boy, let's, let's do some shout outs to people. Okay, let me uh, bring them up. We got a bunch of people come in here in chat. It's great to have everybody here. I got Bluegrass State of Mind. What's going on? Uh, Brim Bass and Beyond. That's a cool name right there. Hey, there's that catfish and crappie dude. That's me. Uh, Chrissy Brown. How you doing, Miss Chrissy? Fish and Freedom. What's going on, Fish and Freedom? D, my sister. What's going on? Getting hooked on. Getting hooked on. D fishing, Jeff Elzer fishing in the sunshine. There's a cool name, Lee Evans catfish. I saw your thumbs down when I was looking over, Chad. A couple seconds later, uh, I caught it. What? Lee Lee Evans fishing in the sunshine. I'm sorry, Lee Evans catfish, Kentucky outdoors. What's up, <laughs> Lindsay? Right, hello, Miss Lindsay. How are you, uh, Lucky Ronnie? What's up, Lucky? Hey, is Lucky the guy that caught that monster off the bank in one of your videos, Ryan? That's him. That's him. That's okay, lucky. I thought the name sounded familiar. Got my good friend, Mo Creek Fishing. What's going on, Rob? How you doing? Uh, Mr. Kitty Whiskers, Real Gals Fishing. Hello, there's Ryan Bortz, Blue Collar Fishing. Shade Tree Cat Fishing, the best way to fish from uh, the bank for catfish, as far as I'm concerned, is in the shade. Sean T. Outdoors from the great state of Louisiana. There is Sandy over at Silver, Hawks Fishing, uh, Silver Fox Fishing. Hello, Sandy. And Sunfish Assassin, what's going on? See if I missed anybody. I did get, I, I'm going to say real gals fishing because I don't want to miss any of the ladies. And there's my Chad's arch nemesis, Brian B. Cat fishing. And I saw Haz in there a little while ago. And there's Eric Burnside, the man who's got the catfish church on Sundays. Check him out, guys. Catfish That's everybody church. I saw. Did I hear that right? A catfish church? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> he, he holds uh, uh, so like some Bible study on Sundays with a oh. lot of the people out of the catfish community. community. Oh. There's actually a Facebook group as well. I don't know if it's the same guy or not. Huh. Hey, yeah, uh, two things cool. real quick, Ryan. I'm going to have to jump off here so I can go get set up for my show real quick. Uh, and real quick for Mark, you made one mistake in all your hellos, and it's not Brian B. Catfish, and it's Brian B. Dinkins, a.k.a. Uncle Daddy Cuz. What's going on? I will see you all later on the bait shop. Tay right, Dogs we'll Gone Fishing. What's Thanks up, for having Jay? me, buddy. Bye, Chad. See you, Steve. See you, Mark. See you, Ryan. See you, buddy. They're always talking smack, Steve, no matter when. It, they got to get that last word in on these in this catfish family. Yeah, it's uh, – Steve can talk smack, too. He, he don't much, but he can. <laughs> 
How did you pull that up, Mark? I can't find that. Uh, if you go over where uh, the chat box, click on the three the three little dots and click on participants. All right, well, I don't know. I ain't figured that out yet. I'm still That's learning right. all this stuff. So, but uh, yeah, I just wanted to try to get some awareness out there, man. To to let people know, like Steve said, it's okay to keep fish. You know, the the stigma that goes with it with the tournament guys. Most of your tournament guys are saying, "Oh no, put them all back." And then you got your guys that are keeping everything they catch. And then, you know, most of the guys like us that are out there just fishing to be fishing. You know, we're we're putting them back mostly. But I don't know. I think I think everybody just find a happy median and work together to find that. But where that's at now, that would take a, people a lot smarter than me to figure out because I'm no biologist and I don't know how many fish people's fishing now versus how many people fishing when these laws were made. I, I don't, I don't know who to get a hold of to start into that discussion. I've talked to a few biologists and I've talked to a few game wardens and they don't really seem interested doing it for quite some time if anybody's going to do it a young guy like yourself is going to but myself aaron wheatley i mean rob benningfield i saw all the old school dudes i mean we're still involved in it but we're just not putting it out on the internet and letting people know kind of what we're doing but we need some new blood in there but the, when, when you when you come in if you're going to come in and help do this start where you can need to start uh, guys like me will help you and, and aaron and, and, and everything but just because you don't see us doing that, so now don't we, we haven't paid our dues. We There's can, always stuff like going that. on behind the scenes, isn't that right, Steve? Yep. Especially in conservation. There's always studies going on. There's electric shock fishing. There's, you know, everything. You got lobbyists that are involved. You got the people that are anti-lobbyists involved. It's a, all you can do, if you're not willing to take that step into that whole quagmire of, 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 of a situation, you know, conservation is, which it is a total mess and it can get pretty ugly. Do it at the local level, do it at a personal level. That's the best we can hope for from our anglers here at the catfish family. I believe, I think it's a step and anybody who really believes wholeheartedly, like Steve says, will take it a step further. Yeah. I mean, it, the resource is there, but we have done a lot. I mean, the thing with Kentucky is they're, they're, commissioners are here today gone tomorrow new ones are in this guy's temporary uh it's all a mess up there and I, like i say we've got some things done to con kind of control it for a minute but we still need the the uh we need game wars to come around and check people and i ain't talking about checking the mom and pops there fishing with their little kid i'm talking about go do some work get out in a boat go find some cat fishermen go find some commercial guys doing things let's do that let's don't make it easy and go down there and give mom a ticket because she ain't got a, a license because she took her little kid fishing uh, that, that that's the kind of we need some enforcement is what we need that's gives game wardens a bad taste you know is is going out there and writing that guy a ticket but not messing with the guy over there on the on the john boat with 75 noodles strung out down the boat. Yeah. you know that absolutely so, Steve, where would you recommend that somebody like me or me or somebody from chat or anybody that's just a normal, average, everyday Joe start with trying to do something about their local lake or, or get some regulations changed? Well, first thing I would do is educate yourself on what we've already done and then take it from, and then you'll know where to take it from there. I mean, I, we've got things I can send you emails and, and different things I can send you on what the progress we've made. We've got charts and pie charts and all kind of uh, analytics uh, and how we, what we want to see, but, uh, you, and then once you do that, you're going to kind of organize a little something, something and, and go to uh, a commissioner's meeting. That stuff is public. So you'd have to be able to go. But the thing is, if you're going to do that, you know, you may even want to go talk to the head of fisheries now and say, Hey, we, we're going to, we need to meet with you guys. When, when is the next public open meeting for the commissioners? And, and you kind of get set on the docket and you go up there and meet. I mean, we've had people from all over the United States show up at one time. We had almost 
250, 300 people show up. They didn't know where to put us. So they put us in four or five different buildings and then had TVs in each one of the buildings to show what was going on in the main building where we was at. So, I mean, it, there, there's been several big processes and things that have been done. But like I say, you can contact me, Aaron Wheatley. He's, he's probably the better one because he's educated himself on the politics of it. I, the politics never was my forte. But, uh, he, you know, he's in with the governors and, and uh, all these high up people. I mean, he even got some awards, Aaron did. So he, he'd be probably the one. But I don't know if he's into it anymore. He's like me. He's kind of burned out a little bit because, you know, when you try so much and then you get beat down by the people you're trying to help, you, you kind of just back off a little bit. And, and so that's that's something you can look forward to as well. When you attempt it and you do your best and you fail because Kentucky fails, then it comes back on you. And, you know, so just like I say, it's a vicious cycle when when you know when when your your feet are going forward and trying to do something so you got people hate you you got people love you you got people jump on your bandwagon you're gonna have other guys work against you so it's it's you gotta love what you're doing and you gotta have a passion for it but that, that's another thing too the passion the guys with passion some of them have too much passion i don't know if you know that or not but they will like yeah, they'll hate you just for their passion and, and, and they'll make a, a career out of it. <laughs> so like I say, <laughs> I, I've, got, I've got everything you need that I can get you started on, on where to go. Uh, but I mean, it's just a long process, man. Like I say, our first go around was in 2013 or 2014. And here it is, 2021. We've got some stuff done in uh, probably two different sections of time. And yeah, we're we're ready for now. What we really need is no transport across the state lines. But you got Kentucky's lawyers telling them that they can't do that because of this, and so. And then you got lobbyists, the, the commercial fishing lobbyists. They got the money. We don't. We're not organized. We're just fishermen trying to make a change. Yep. And even when we did get organized, we still weren't organized enough because it's all that right there. You know, you got the commercial lobbyists that got that money. I mean, who, who's going to give, who's gonna give us money for that? They're funded and they're trained and they're supported by big business. That's a right. big Goliath to go up against, definitely in any 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 scenario. I, hey, I, don't, even, I don't want to shoot you down, but things have already been done, and we need guys to kind of keep pushing it. But I wouldn't expect to get a whole lot done. You might be able to get a few more done uh, if you push the right way. So just, it's a long road. Just understand that. I'm not even 100% against the commercial fishing. I think it just needs to be monitored. Right. More. Like you said, even even like you said about the game wardens at Taylorsville Lake, well, who's who's monitoring these these commercial fishermen and who's going to go out there and do anything to them and them and them supporting this big industry, you know? I mean, they're, they're kind of protected by what, by what is supposed to be moderating them, you know. Yeah, I went I, up in front of the council. The myself, Aaron Wheatley, a bunch of us went up in front. My my main goal. This is when we organized last. My main goal was to show an economic impact of what, how catfishing has had in in the state of Kentucky with the catfish conference and and all the other things that we do here in the state of Kentucky. They didn't want to hear none of that. They didn't want to hear none of it. I, I we got we got Kentucky tourism involved. I had them come down to the catfish conference at its busiest, talking to me. And then what was cool is it worked out. I, it didn't really help, but I shouldn't even say nothing about it. But anyway, they came down and, and seen what we had going on, and that didn't help. You can threaten them. Well, I'll move it. I don't think they care. I don't know. You know, if we we literally can move a million dollars at a catfish conference in that weekend and they get tax money from that they get other things from that and apparently the the commercial guys have got that those um, lobbyists so tied up that, you know somebody's getting paid somebody's getting paid I hate to 
how boring this stuff. I'm not trying to make it boring and everything. Not at all. I'm busy. I was riveted by listening. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. But uh, Chad's fixing to come on in about 10 minutes. So I'm going to go ahead and end this stream here. Steve, I'll be getting up with you uh, probably one day this week. And we'll talk about what I can do and how maybe I can rally some people together and, and get this yeah. thing going. I've already got going on with Mike and some other guys too. So. Well, but, the main uh, thing, guys, is just go out and have fun. Really, that's that's been my motto for the last few years. Uh, just just go out and have fun and and obey the laws and and uh, just have fun. Yeah. Educate yourself by the rules. Try to do your part the best you know how to. Do your research on how you can do better, and uh, we can start there. If you want to take it a step further everybody will be grateful for you for doing so. That's yep. pretty much my closing statement. All right. Well, I appreciate Steve for coming on, Mark. Thanks for coming on, helping me out. Absolutely, bud. Appreciate You're doing a great job on your first show. Yes, sir. Appreciate everybody in chat. Guys, next Thursday at 7. See you. See you later, guys. <laughs>